Prince Harry does not feel safe in the UK. Lawyers tell the High Court. Now a legal hearing challenging Home Office decision to prevent the Duke from paying for police protection when visiting is being heard today. Now, Prince Harry's lawyers have told the court that he does not feel safe when he's visiting the UK, a place that is and always will be his home. His legal team have told the High Court. Now, I said this before, that the only reason that you would deny a man of security, a person openly willing to pay and foot the bill for his own security, not to offset or get in the taxpayer's pocket. Prince Harry, in this case, wants to pay for his own security and for the security of his wife and children so they could come to the UK to see family and friends. The only reason you would deny such a man of security is because you want harm to come to him. It's because you want that person not to feel safe. Now, it's common knowledge that whenever there's a scandal in the UK involving the government or even the royal family, immediately the next day you see UK tabloids manufacturing outraged over anything that Prince Harry or Meghan say or do, like closing a cardo or eating an avocado like they did to Meghan. Now, apparently, we've seen that constantly every single time. Even the government uses Prince Harry as a scapegoat. And now that the scapegoat has gone away, is far away from the UK, he lives in the US, wants to bring his family to the UK to see his family and friends. I'm guessing the Queen because Prince Harry has said that he has a relationship with the Queen and that he loves and respects the Queen and that he wants his children, to see the queen. Now, he even named his daughter Lilbet Diana after the nickname of the queen, Lilbet, Queen Elizabeth. Now, Prince Harry just wants to, be, to make sure that his family, his wife, his children are all safe. That's all he wants to do. And the fact that a man who lost his mother being chased by photographers, paparazzi in France, fighting to take a picture of him and is being denied the person who grew up without a mother because UK tabloids paid paparazzi to chase after Princess Diana day and night to the point that she lost her life because any news and information about Diana was in such high demand in those days, during those days where Princess Diana was alive and now his son was stripped of his security and simply wants to make sure that his wife and children are safe including himself are safe when they visit the UK a country whose tabloids have dedicated day and night to incite hate against him and Meghan the constant probing by UK tabloids on Prince Harry day and night every single day for the past six years now Six years of a smear campaign. From the moment Prince Harry's relationship to Meghan became public, they were already abusing Meghan. The abuse already began. The racism already began. And now, people have even been jailed. Racists have been jailed, threatening Prince Harry and Meghan, calling him a race traitor for marrying a mixed-race woman. They've been jailed and now they've already been let out of prison after serving their time. The same same people have been let out and yet to deny a man willing to pay his own security to protect his wife and child of security. A man who lost his mother who was chased by photographers again. The only reason you would do such a thing isn't just because you're cruel. It's because... You want to harm that person. Because you want to harm that person. And we've already seen that. We've seen how the only reason Priti Patel, the head of the home office, would deny a prince of the UK of security is because she received a phone call from the palace 
to deny Prince Harry the ability to pay his own security. Nobody needs to give me evidence of, of this or that. It's very, very clear. Okay, it's very, very clear. It's, it takes critical thinking skills. Just think critically. Use your own head and think. Can Priti Patel, the head of, the head of home office, deny Prince Harry's request of security without receiving a phone call from the palace? Courtiers, who basically spread the wishes of their bosses, the Prince William, the Prince Charles, Queen Elizabeth, basically spread their wishes. Whatever Queen Elizabeth tells them to do, they will do. They will obey the head of state. Now, I've seen a so-called carnival or so-called expert that saying that after Prince Andrew settling with Virginia, to paying 12 million, which the Queen has helped Prince Andrew foot the bill, the Queen has helped Prince Andrew, that the Queen doesn't deserve this, that Prince, uh, Prince Harry Prince Harry is suing home office to protect his family. Like, like seriously? 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 I mean, this so-called carnival of so-called experts aren't just racist or xenophobic. This, they're too hateful. They're all of that and combined. They're too hateful. I mean, imagine this. Someone saying the queen doesn't deserve. Watching her grandson basically practically fighting for his wife and child to have security to put to make sure that his wife and son and daughter are all safe a daughter named after the queen are safe while in the uk will make the queen sad that she doesn't deserve this i'm really hoping that they don't echo the thoughts of the queen like they commonly like to say they do because that will mean the Queen Elizabeth herself does not want Prince Harry and his children to feel safe while they are in the UK or anywhere, basically. I mean, but to be honest with you, Prince Harry says he has a good relationship with the Queen. And who am I? Who am I to criticize, to criticize that? Who am I? I respect that. I'm a fan. I respect that. But I also take it like with a grain of salt. Prince Harry said it's the people close to the queen that are the problem. They are the ones that are advising the queen wrongly. So I'm assuming they are advising the queen that Prince Harry having security while in the UK is a problem. Like seriously? Seriously? Because if these people, the so-called carnival of so-called experts who say they have Sources in the palace are echoing the feelings of the queen. Then you can be sure about one thing. That even if Prince Harry were to receive security, would he still be safe with that security that had been granted or given to him? Will his family, his wife and children be secure? Those are some of the questions that should definitely be asked currently as we speak. Now, Prince Harry said this, that his desire to return to see family and friends was emphasized on the first day of a legal hearing related to his claim over the home office decision not to allow him to pay for police protection for himself and his family while in the UK. The Duke of Sussex wants to bring his children to visit from the US, but he and his family are unable to return to his home because it is too dangerous. A legal representative has previously said. Now, ahead of a main hearing, the Royal Courts of Justice were told on Friday that both sides agreed on the vast majority of proposals that some matters concerning arrangements for the security of public figures in the UK, including royals, should remain confidential. Now, referring to the Duke's claim over the Home Office decision, Shahid Fatima, Queen's Chancellor, Prince Harry's lawyer said this this claim is about the fact that the claimant prince harry does not feel safe when he's in the uk given the security arrangements that were applied to him in june 2021 and will continue to be applied to him if he returns and of course it should go without saying that he wants to come back to see family and friends and to continue to support 
charities that are close to his heart, most of all, this is and will always be his home. Now, this follows an incident in London in 2021 when he returned to the UK for the unveiling of a statue of his late mother, Diana, Princess of Wales, and his car was reportedly chased by photographers while in the UK. Do you hear that? Prince Harry's car was chased by photographers in while he was in the UK after he left the World Child Charity Awards event while in the UK. The shame of these people behaving above their above the law. Because make no mistake, I'm assuming the person who said that shame that the queen has to endure this, that a grandson is practically fighting to protect his wife and children while in the, while in the UK, not to be chased like his mother was to death. Now, I'm assuming these people are basically fighting to be able to, to have access to Prince Harry and Meghan if they're in the UK, to be able to chase them without having to worry about Prince Harry and Meghan receiving police protection, armed security around them. Because make no mistake about one thing, if Prince Harry went to the UK and was chased by photographers after he left the World Child Charity events, it would be 10 times worse if Meghan... The woman, UK tablets, have made a profit, a lot of money, off of bullying her, harassing her, insulting her, and defaming her every single day for the past six years. If Megan was there, it would be ten times much more worse. If Megan and the kids that UK tablets want to profit from, want their pictures plastered across their front pages, pictures of them, on their phone pages. If Megan was in the UK, believe me, it would be 10 times worse. Megan and the children, Archie and Libby Diana, it would be 10 times worse because UK tablets will be fighting to sell newspapers and they will do every single thing in their power to get that picture of Harry, Megan, Archie and Libby Diana. And Harry and Megan not having security in that instance, armed security that is, police protection, that have access to intelligence will be extremely dangerous for Prince Harry and Meghan and their children. Now, it's a huge shame also, a very, very huge shame for Prince Charles. The man has failed as a husband and also failed as a father to Prince Harry. Imagine failing as a husband to Princess Diana, the late Princess Diana of Wales. Imagine failing and the only responsibility you have left, at least to make up for your failures in marriage to Princess Diana, just protect your child, protect your kid. Because I believe that one call for Prince Charles, one call from the Queen, one call from them, and Prince Harry will immediately get security. Just one call, one phone call from them. We know Prince William, Prince William will never do that. With all his jealousy and him hiding all the affair, alleged affairs he's had with Rose Hanbury, he would never do that. So let's not talk about Prince William. He'd never ever do that. Now, one call from the Queen and Prince Charles will solve the matter. Just one call. So to be honest with you, I, to be honest, I, I really don't know. I don't know because I'm not there. I'm like, I won't be the arbiter or go into Prince Harry's mind because I can't do that. I'm not a boy language expert or anything. But the fact that I was thinking about is this. I mean, I'm sure that Prince Harry must have thought like, why is it that I'm fighting for security? To protect my wife and child when basically one call from the queen will solve the matter why is it that the queen isn't willing to step in to protect her grandson 
I don't understand that. I will never know. Maybe it's because of what Harry said in the interview. That the people around her are the problem. I'm guessing it's the people around her. So let me just think that it's the people around the queen that are the problem. Let me think about that. Let me just say that, okay? Let me say that it's the people around the queen that are the problem. Because Prince Harry said that in the Oprah interview. That the people around the queen are the problem. Are advising her wrongly. Now... The grounds that Home Office have used to, to reject the Prince's claim, that is Prince Harry's claim, also emerged on Friday in a skeletal argument that was circulated. It argues that personal protective security for the Prince is still considered by UK authorities on a case-by-case -case basis due to his exceptional status. This depends on the reason for his presence in Britain and the functions he carries out when present. They also argue that the Prince failed to appreciate the role of the Home Office and the Royal and VIP Executive Committee, RAVEC, that is, a task force of civil servants and Scotland Yard officers as the expert and democratically accountable decision maker on matters of protective security. This is nonsense. 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 Listen, first of all, I saw today that Prince Andrew is receiving Two million pounds worth of taxpayer financial security constantly, even after quitting his royal duties, him being publicly disgraced. Prince Harry has never ever been accused of being an alleged pedophile. It's Prince Andrew. Never. It's Prince Andrew that has been accused of being an alleged pedophile. He's paid millions for someone he's never met. Allegedly never met, according to his own words. Now, the fact is this, is that if the Queen said that Prince Harry gets security, he will get security. If Prince Charles says Prince Harry gets security, he will get security. That's the situation right now, basically. If they say it, the fact that they're denying Prince Harry of security, to me personally, I was just thinking, you know, it's just a thought. Let me just share my thought. Allow me to share my thought because... We are here to share our thoughts, what we think about, our views, okay? And I was thinking today, right, perhaps, okay, Prince Harry is fighting to receive security, but he's also trying to show us, basically, show the entire world how petty the farm is. The farm which the Queen heads, the Queen, Prince Charles, Prince William, they are the farm. The farm which the queen heads perhaps is trying to show us exactly every single thing that he said in the Oprah interview. In the Oprah interview, like he said that there was no money for security for Meghan, that the royal family told him that there was no money for security for Meghan, that Meghan should go back to acting. Prince Harry knew that it was going to be very, very hard. He knew from the beginning it was going to be very, very hard. Now, but apparently, according to the UK royal family and the tabloids, they welcomed Meghan. If those were the words they were telling Prince Harry on the side, clearly, they never did. I've talked about that in my recent video that I just posted today. Now, a ruling by the judge in this case is expected at a later date. At a later date, at the request on Friday for certain details, including witness statements, to remain confidential. To remain confidential confidential now a ruling will be made later on so i'm thinking that prince harry just wants us to see that every single thing first of all prince harry lost his mother his mother was stripped of his security prince harry first of all is making his mother proud the late princess diana by fighting for his family fighting for his wife and child to make sure that they have security. They are fighting for them. Princess Diana was stripped of her security. And she lost her life. Prince Harry is fighting for the life of his wife and his two children actually in Liberty Diana to make sure that they have police protection. And for that, first of all, I respect Prince Harry for that. I respect him for what he is doing. I completely respect this. Now, one thing I wanted to say is that 
about the, the usual review, the review basically is that this is a lot of information is confidential. A lot of information in this review is confidential. It's not being revealed. Now the UK media, the tabloids, will report on many skills of information presented out of context because of the sensitivity of this issue because of matters of security or public figures. Actually, Prince Harry's lawyers and even home office have asked for the matters to be confidential. Now, because of the sensitivity of the issue, be very careful about the reports you choose to amplify. I think we should be careful in that matter because security is an important matter. And to me personally, I feel like it's very, very clear. Perhaps even Prince Harry knows this. And that is trying to show us that he's done every single thing. He himself has done everything and he's doing every single thing to ensure the safety and the security of his wife and children. Perhaps Prince Harry is trying to show us this. Because it's very, very clear to me personally that Charles and even the Queen do not want to see Harry's family or Harry himself. They are the ones responsible for the security situation and they are the ones preventing Harry from having security. The Home Office on that, that Priti Patel heads cannot determine that Charles' son, the son of a future king of England, doesn't get security. They cannot. They cannot. They can't. They can't. They can't. No matter the bureaucracy, the politics in this matter, no matter what, family, this is the squad family, family, no matter what, the Home Office cannot determine that Charles' son doesn't get security. They cannot. It is the palace. It is the palace that made the phone call. The palace. It's a matter of critical thinking. A matter of critical thinking. Pretty Patel can't do that. She can't. Only the palace, Buckingham Palace, Guardian's House, or Kensington Palace, only the offices of the three future heirs to the, the heirs to the throne of England, that is Prince Charles or Prince William, only they have that kind of power to call home office and make sure that Prince Harry isn't allowed to pay for his own security. Not to mention Prince William is afraid of, you know, being overshadowed every single time whenever Prince Harry and Meghan are present. Both Prince William and Kate Milton are afraid of that. I mean, the leaks were coming from Kingston Palace. It's public knowledge, right? Every single person knows this. Now, Prince Harry just wants his family, his wife and child, to, to be safe while in the UK. That's, that's, that's all that a husband wants, to keep his family safe. And perhaps, as I've said, Prince Harry just wants to show us that he's doing every single thing that he can. And history will remember this. History, when you look at history, it will remember this day. It will remember this day. And I'm thankful for also Prince Harry's lawyer, who goes by the name of Shahid Fatima, Queen's Chancellor. A woman and representing Harry in court is at Blackstone. Shahid Fatima, Queen's Chancellor, who specializes in international and public laws. Her practice extends beyond the UK and includes European Court of Human Rights and UN Treaty Bodies. In 2007, she was awarded Justice Human Rights Lawyer of the Year. I like that. 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 You know, I like Prince Harry's lawyer. I like it. You know, I've been reading about her, basically. She's a fantastic lawyer, to be honest with you. She's a fantastic lawyer. She's, she has amazing experience, years of experience, and she's going to do a great job. She's going to do a great job. Now, Shahid Fatima is a widely recognized and award-winning lawyer. In 2019, she was the recipient of their World's Right the Wrong Award, Yvette Cooper MP, presenting the award, described Shahid as having tirelessly Champion the protection of vulnerable and marginalized children living in conflict-affected areas. She has given a voice of the vulnerable children in conflict whose future is taken from them by the stark realities of war. In January 2017, 
the lawyer magazine named Shahid as one of its top 100 leading hot 100 leading lawyers. Now, in December 2013, she was listed in Chambers UK's top junior bar 100. In October 2013, she was awarded Junior of the Year in Human Rights and Public Law by Chambers Bar Awards, or shortly said in the same category in 2011. And in 2007, she won even way more awards. Shahid is a brilliant lawyer. She has a deep knowledge of the law and enormous attention to detail. She's excellent to work with. That's someone who's worked with her. No, I love Prince Harry's choices. Now, go get them, Fatima. Go get them. Go get them. Now, Prince Harry is a free man with business and charities in the UK. He should be able to go there when he wants to and should be and he should feel safe when he's there. His family should also be safe when he's there. Now, it's important to remember that Prince Harry wants to be able to pay for his security when in the UK. The public still pays for Prince Andrew's security, despite being stripped of royal duties and him being able to find £12 million to pay Virginia Gouffre, with Queen Elizabeth helping him pay for it, pay the bills. Now go get them, Fatima. Go get them. I wish you all the best, and I want Prince Harry to get back his security. Harry and his children represent the sixth 7th and 8th in line to the throne. They are all more senior than Prince Andrew, who continues to receive taxpayer funding security regardless of the nature of his activity. As the home office designated Andrew a higher security threat? That's a, that's a million dollar question. One accused of being an alleged pedophile, one who stepped down from Royal duties, never been accused of any single thing, never been accused of a crime or anything, nothing. He simply married a mixed race woman and he was bullied for it. He was bullied for it simply because he married a mixed race woman. And the only reason Harry doesn't have security right now is because the palace has made phone calls. They have made phone calls. According to Prince Harry's lawyer statement, Harry offered to pay for police protection in January 2020 and was denied, but he was given protection on his first return to the UK, which was arbitrarily removed on his second trip two months later. During that trip, his cow was chased by Parazi. His first return was practically during Prince Philip's funeral. So, we've seen what's happening and you've seen what keeps happening? Now, during that trip, the second trip that he came to the UK, Harry was chased by Parazi. After experiencing the danger created by the lack of police protection, Harry filed a court action against the UK Home Office in September 2021 to have a judge rule on the decision making behind the security procedures. At that time, he again offered to pay for police protection. Now, the gotcha moment from today's hearing is Harry. Didn't explicitly, didn't explicitly offer to pay for police protection in June that he received for free in April. Hmm? The gotcha, the gotcha moment from today's hearing is Harry didn't explicitly offer to pay for police protection in June that he received for free in April. Then after realizing the danger of the bait and switch, he reiterated his offer to pay for police protection in September court filings. Okay, as I said, Harry and his children represent the 6th, 7th, and 8th in line to the throne. They are all more senior than Prince Andrew, who continues to receive taxpayer funding security regardless of his nature of his activities. And the fact is, someone made a phone call to home office. It's sinister what they are doing to Prince Harry and his biracial family. His family should be ashamed of himself, of itself. That is, Prince Charles, the father, even the Queen Elizabeth should be ashamed of himself, of themselves, for failing to protect Prince Harry. And I'm thankful, first of all, that Prince Harry and Meghan left, and I'm sincerely hoping that 
Harry manages to get security. It's an abomination that Prince Harry, a grandchild of the reigning monarch, has to go through courts to get protection in his own country. Protection he wants to pay for himself to protect his family from his own people, the Williams, the Prince William, the UK tabloids that have a contract with the royal family and can't accept to be rejected by Prince Harry. Okay? Now, my name is Brian and I hope you enjoyed our podcast today. I hope you like, subscribe and support our growing family on YouTube. Kindly hit that like and subscribe button for daily and consistent content. Keywords, daily and consistent. Stay tuned to our next video family. Stay tuned.